program. Um, I'm Kathy Cavallari. I'm president of the Westboro Historical Society. I want to welcome you all here. This is actually our first live historical society program since COVID. Yay. So let uh, yay! Oh, yay. Everybody give us uh, and our, our programs are going to be a mix of Zoom and in person, depending on the weather, the time of year, and the type of program. Uh, so this is Stroll Down Memory Lane. Uh, I do want to mention there are going to be refreshments available after the program at the table in the back. Um, I want to remind you the Historical Society was founded in 1889, uh, and we were formed to, to preserve local history through research, programs like this one, and the preservation of artifacts. And our 300 years of artifacts are preserved and, and uh, ready for viewing, if you will, at the Sibley House right up the street at 13 Parkman Street. Um, and that is the 1844 Greek Revival home of the slave maker William Sibley. Um, and we are going to be opening up the home for Thanksgiving weekend for an open house uh, during the holiday stroll. And at the end, I'll tell you about some other upcoming things. Oh, good, good, thank you, thank you. Yes, it's been a long time. So uh, we're going to be part of uh, Westboro's holiday stroll, which is the Sunday afternoon of Thanksgiving weekend. I think it's 2 to 5. And you'll be able to enter the Sibley House and probably get a tour at that time. Uh, if you enjoy tonight's program, I encourage you to like our Facebook page, which is Westboro Historical Society, and check out our website, uh, www.westborohistory.org. Uh, and our membership information is also available there. We'd love to have you as members. Um, now to introduce tonight's participants, um, I want to thank town moderator John Arnold, who is going to moderate tonight's panel. And I'd like to welcome our panel. And why don't you just raise your hand as I say your name. I'll step back a little. Uh, Bunny Perrin. There she is. Uh, mm -hmm. Dexter Blois, Phil Kittredge, David Nurse, and Marge Fisher. And now I'm just going to ask Christina Allen to give a brief background on each participant. Hi, you're awfully glad you're here tonight. And we have a great panel, as you can see. They are all townies, because <laughs> yes. the definition of townie in my book is someone who probably was born in Westboro, but certainly went to Westboro High School and graduated from Westboro High School and has all those memories. And most of our panel has stayed in Westboro and, or come back. The first I want to introduce is Bunny Perrin, born in 1921. So Bunny is 101. <laughs> And she thinks like a sharp, sharp tack. <laughs> she actually uh, ran the Circle Candy Store at the Rotary, called the Circle because it was at the Rotary. She and her husband, Freddie Perrin, ran the shop, and it was a favorite, I know, my kids when we came to town half a century ago, because it was penny candy. Penny candy, toys, and it was the best place for kids. Rob's like it too, but every kid I know said, let's go to the circle. And Bunny was always smiling and loving when you walked in the door, and Freddie had a wonderful sense of humor, a good guy. So if you know the circle, you've been around Westbrook. The next person is David Nurse. He was born in 1936. You're a kid. <laughs> <laughs> what is really nice is that very few times have I been at meetings with most of us with gray hair and things, and nobody calls us a kid except somebody who's 101. <laughs> uh, David, as I said, was born in 1936. He was the oldest of five children of the farmer Arthur Nurse of many generations, like Tim. <laughs> and they are related, and David's very proud, the Nurse family is very proud, because their relatives have been here 300 years on the Nurse farm. They are related to Rebecca Nurse, who was hung. Was she hung? Burned. She was hung. Yeah. It, no, it's just hanged. hanged. <laughs> <laughs> she was hung hanged in Salem. And the nurses naturally did not want to hang around Salem because uh, it wasn't healthy for nurses to be related to Rebecca Nurse and be there. So they came out to Framingham 
and I grew up in Framingham, and there was a Salem's End Road because people were escaping Salem and the persecution of Salem, so they went to Salem Ends Road. But some of the nurses came all the way to Westboro, and 300 years ago, I started their farm. And um, at that farm, a fabulous invention. Um, David, who was the inventor? The inventor? Of the plow? Oh, Lord, it's Joel Nurse. I okay. Think. Joel Nurse invented a, a plow that is now in the Smithsonian because of its great, um, whatever it does, Tim, what does it do? <laughs> uh, it's a side hill plow, and so you're able to flop it from one side to the other as you go back and forth. Okay, it's a floppy plow. And there's other <laughs> other aspects that he can talk about, probably more. more but uh, he's gonna talk about his boyhood, so we're, I just wanna make sure that people knew the plow came from the nurses, the nurses are uh, revolutionary soldiers, and have a great history of 300 years here. The next is Dexter Boyce, born in 1942. Dexter grew up in Westboro, and he and his father, or his father, ran Westboro Drug. And, West, and Dexter, on right on the Rotary, near Bunny's Circle. And this drugstore was, as far as I can see, the place to go get a cup of coffee downtown. That's what they say. All right. <laughs> and there was a counter, fresh, wonderful sodas, and the cops all went there for coffee. And if you want to know that for proof, walk into the police department. And I probably many of you don't usually walk into the police department, but you just go in and you're saying, I want to look at the historic photograph. Because on their walls, a big picture of Dexter and Boyce's drugstore called um, Whisper Drug. The counter with like four cops all around drinking coffee. <laughs> who, who were they next to? Do you remember? One of them was Russ Johnson. I don't remember the other one. I think uh, Doris, Mark Herbert. Was Mark Herbert and Doris and Pete Mead? Doris and Charlie Pete Mead. Mead. Okay, well, those guys. <laughs> all right, all right, guys. All right. <laughs> um, it was the place to get a cup of coffee and great sodas <clears throat> and other things. And that was West Road Drug or Bus uh, Boyce's Drug Store. Next person is Marge Fisher. And Marge was born in 1949. Um, grew up in Westboro, went to Westboro High. She is um, spent 30 years at Harvard in health information. In health information. And is a passionate hiker and environmentalist, and one of the main people in the Westboro Community Land Trust. Last but not certainly least is Phil. Everybody knows <coughs> Phil Kittredge as our, he was born in 1952. He's the baby. <laughs> um, <Wham. laughs> and you know Phil as um, a major local historian who has the one, most wonderful collection of vintage photographs of Westboro, thousands of them that he's been restoring, uh, colorizing. He's the one if you need a Photograph as I did of West of Annie Fields when she was a young beautiful girl. You go to film, and our commentator is John Arnold, who couldn't we couldn't find a better person to run this panel. As you know, he's the town moderator, and he will keep everybody hopping and on time. Not doing so well so far. <laughs> you, did, you didn't say I was part of that. Job. I know. That's why I'm letting you go. <laughs> All right. So I'm only going to say a few That's things right. about you. Um, John also came to Westboro third grade, right? Yep. Okay, so he uh, is not actually a daddy. <laughs> and uh, John did graduate from Westboro High. And what I know about John is John and I got elected the same year to our first political position in 1977. It was for library trustees. Um, I was not 19, but John was. <laughs> he was. He was the youngest guy to be elected to town office. Hmm in that whole period of, and he served, it was fun to be on a board with, because we needed to get shaken up by some young minds, and there he was. So, John, all you're right. on, take it away. Okay, so uh, we're here for an hour tonight. Thanks all for coming. I want to thank the Historical Society, the Library, Westboro TV, and everyone for doing this. 
Um, when we reflect on growing up in Westboro, um, there's so much we could talk about, and we only have like 50 minutes or an hour. And I know that everybody here has all sorts of stories. We're going to try to make sure everybody gets equal time. But I'm actually hoping that there's so much interest here that maybe we do this again, because I've got a page full of questions that we're not going to get to, uh, because we don't have enough time. So what I've tried to do is focus the questions. We're going to see how the discussion goes and just let the, let the discussion flow. But the topics we're really going to focus on are school and sort of social and cultural things, just to see how, we, how our lives, where we grow up, or the time we grow up in is different. Um, so let's just get started and see how it goes. Um, so I'm just going to start off with a pr pretty open-ended questions and question. Just ask everybody to sort of keep it to a, a minute or two. Um, so why don't we uh, just uh, start from Phil and work down? So why don't you tell a little bit about which specific schools you went to? Um, how did you get to school? And if you have any specific events or memories that really stand out? Um, well, I went to um, the Armstrong School, and then I went to uh, the middle school, and. We were, I was the second class that went into the new high school, but also for a short period of time, we ended up at the Forbes building, I think for a year. Um, it was a wonderful time. I, I have to tell you, you know, a lot of kids say high school was terrible. I loved high school. I had a great time. I had a lot of fun, um, a lot of great memories, and still keep in touch with some of my, our classmates. Um, so for me, um, the schools were good, and actually it was one the, Mr. Ballard, my guidance counselor, that really encouraged me to go and pursue my interest in electronics and communications and go on to college and get a degree in that. And I did. And how'd you get to school? Um, we used to take the Dodd and Tyler buses. <laughs> and I can say without, with a little bit of embarrassment, that I used to ride the bus with Craig Tyler. <laughs> and his father, Parker Tyler, was one that drove the bus. And when we went over the Milk Street Bridge, we'd get all the kids on the back to try to bounce. <laughs> and we are the only two, myself and the son of the bus driver, to be thrown off the bus. <laughs> uh, shenanigans. But uh, most of the time it was bus, but we, all, we also had to walk. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Marge, what schools did you go to in, uh, in any specific <clears throat> events or memories? Or how did well, you get to I went to kindergarten in the community building, the Forbes oh. community building. Um, and then we went to the new school, which it became the Armstrong School. It, it had just been built, and at the time it was known as the new school. Um, then junior high in the Forbes building, which is right next door. Um, that was sixth and seventh grade. Uh, then we were shipped for eighth grade up to the high school. So we, there were five grades in the high school at that time, eight through 12. And the, the benefit to me was they needed more softball players. So they let the eighth grade, eighth graders play on the softball team. Um, anyways, and I graduated in 67. So when you say the high school, you mean the Fisher Street School, I mean, Snap, I which mean, was the, which became the junior high, and now yep, it's yep, whatever yep, they yep, call yep, the yep. middle school. <laughs> um, so I remember mostly taking Herbie Michelson's bus to school, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I lived on the corner of Oak and Lyman out there on Route Nine. That that corner has been closed now. They had to eliminate one set of lights, I guess, because it was kind of a confusing intersection. But anyways, um, and then I think in high school it was Dodd and Tyler. <laughs> funny how now we don't, we, you know, it's like one student. Yeah, we, yeah, we're yeah. actually talking about people by name. So funny, how about you? What, what schools did you go to? How did you get to school and got any favorite memory? Well, I lived two and a half miles from school. Mm -hmm. So I went on a school bus, and you probably never heard of the man that drove my school. His name was Kimball. <laughs> Walter Kimball. Oh, yeah. Walter Kimball. That's who drove my school. So I went to the Harvey building. Mm -hmm. I went to the Forbes building. But, and then I graduated from the Forbes building. Mm -hmm. So the Forbes building was still a high school? Because up above the Forbes, it still says yeah, Westboro High School. Yeah, we had a graduation right? at the town hall. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that was the school. I graduated. Okay. So I went on the bus. And as far as any specific, I can remember a lot of weird things that happened. But <laughs> like Phil, I loved high school. Okay. I really enjoyed it. I was, 
vice president of my class all during the four years of high school. And uh, do you remember Billy Bennett? No. I was that person. Anyway. What year did you graduate? Uh, 39. 1939. 1939. And uh, I enjoyed school here. And uh, I, as I say, I went on the bus. What else do you want to know? <laughs> How did the teachers and students? Oh, yeah. We can get to that. But yeah, you can take that one. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. They didn't wear slacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> men, not the women. Not yeah. the women. The women. Yeah, yeah, that's all I know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and it was it was a good experience. Yeah. Okay. I love school. Okay, I didn't go to college, but I loved school. That's good. Mm -hmm. all right. Dexter, what? I started at kindergarten at the community house as Raj did. First grade at the Harvey School. Second grade at the Keaton Building. Up on the third floor of the Bay State Key right, building, yep. right which, is, which the, is now where it used to be the bank. Where, or, where the, uh, uh, Alexander, the, Alexander, the accountants had yeah, place. Well, used we to had be there, second yeah. grade up on the third floor of that building because uh -huh. it was an overflow. Mm -hmm. Third grade was at Eli Whitney. Fourth grade was at uh, back to Harvey. <laughs> fifth and sixth were fifth six were at Armstrong. <laughs> Seven through ten and a half was at the Forbes building, the, the high school, and then we went up to Fisher Street for the high school when I graduated from that school, it was high school. So I've been to all of them except the one prior to on School Street and the one post on West Main Street. Okay. All right. And you take buses the whole time? Oh, no. I walk because I lived two houses right up the street, two houses. Okay. Where I grew up, uh, and so it was across the street or up the street, or we walked up. So to the hard car is remember which school you walked to because we changed school size. <laughs> oh, each, each year was a different building. That's right. I can say. Yeah. <laughs> All right, David, how about you? Life was simpler back when I was there. I mean, I was about two and a half miles out of town, also, um, and we had the Carlstrom buses. They were the yeah. commercial buses. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any school buses that ran out of our, our way, and so I was on the Carlstrom buses for. Years, I can't remember. At the end, I remember being on school. But I was at Harvey, as, as you were, Dexter, and then Eli Whitney, yeah. moving straight to Eagle, and then to the, it's now the Forbes Building. And it was a great time. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Enjoyed football, had a good time there. And uh, don't regret any moment of it. Nice. Okay. Why don't we look? So, you talked about football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to think. Where did he play football? Yeah. That was down at Bay State, where Bay State yeah. Commons is now. Was the football and baseball field for the high school when the days were gone by, and the field house was the community house on the basement floor where the food pantry is now. That was the field house for football and baseball. So we shower there, or get into our uniforms, go out in the field, and get muddy because oh, the, field, yeah. the field was abysmal in those days. And, and so all the photographs ever taken of us would show us. <laughs> uh, when we had our, our group photograph day, we all got, they did that early in the in the afternoon, so we would not be muddy. Uh, it was a mud bowl, and it would, when it froze up in the in the fall, it became an ice bowl, and it was really miserable. But it was a good time. We had we had a great time. Just first, a little extra context. We'll we'll just do this very quickly, go in reverse order. Just uh, with the address, or close enough to the address that you remember of your childhood home. We'll, just, we'll go with you, David, and go back. We didn't have an address. You didn't have an address. We're on Hurst Street. Hurst Street. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to Hurst Street. That was easy. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. 10 Park Street. Two, Park. two houses on this side, right up the street. Funny? Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the question? Your childhood home address. Oh, yeah. it, was, oh, it was 36 Otis Street. Otis Street, okay. But uh, it's not there anymore. No, right, they of course. They basically yeah. took yeah. down yeah. the house that I was born and brought up in. Mm -hmm. I tried to add to save it, but I couldn't save it. Amazon, so the robots Amazon could had too much power. Yeah, Amazon <laughs> took over. Okay. How about you, Mark? I hate Corner of Oak and Lyman and oh. the old Forbish Tavern. The old, oh, the old Forbish Tavern. Oh, okay. okay. And Phil? Um, well, this is what's a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> I was born, well, I was raised at 124 Milk Street, but I grew up at 126 Milk Street. Mm -hmm. At some point, they built a new house between ours <laughs> and the railroad bridge, and they had to renumber all so the houses. Same house, different numbers. Same house, different numbers. Number. Where do you live now, Phil? 126 Milk Street. <laughs> I think. <laughs> my wife says yes. I actually went to a party there my last day, I think of 7th grade or 8th grade or so, because your sister had a party here. So, um, so 
keeping on the, on the we'll do, do a couple more stories about school, so, uh, or school age. Um, sort of, what did, you, what did you and your friends do after school or on weekends? And I guess, funny, we'll start with you and go this way. What did we do? What was a typical, like, after school or weekend like? Well, I went you? right home from school because if I didn't, I, I'd have to walk. Walked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I didn't stay for very much at school. I played basketball mm -hmm. sometimes, but that was all. Yeah. Oh, but I didn't do too much right and Did yet. friends get together either on weekends or after school? Uh, or how, there, how? Ag there again, there was always a, a trouble of transportation, mm -hmm. you know? And I can remember, oh, somebody was given dancing lessons in the high school gym, and I had 50 cents to pay for the lesson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I walked, and I wanted it so bad, I walked from my house to dead town, and my mother had given me a sermon before I left to spend, that was outrageous to spend 56 on a desk. So I just watched them turn around, walk back. Oh, I still had my 56. <laughs> That's one memory I have. <laughs> what about you, Marge? What, what was a typical either after school or weekend activity that you and your friends did? Well, through elementary and, and junior high school, you'd go home and riding bikes out in the woods, and my aunt and uncle owned the house on Chauncey Street right on the lake, and we were very often down there. Um, <laughs> that, that was a great place to earn money because the, the grounds were so large, we'd be raking leaves in the fall, we'd be helping with the mowing. I can remember washing windows unendingly. Um, and, uh, one, one time my aunt said to me, this was Carl and Eleanor Johnson, my aunt and uncle, um, and she had me wash the front door. And I thought, why do you wash the front door? And she said, well, I want it to look interesting to anyone who may come to it. <laughs> okay, well, that's stuck in my head. Um, and, and then certainly during summers, um, we were at the lake all the time. And I so wanted Chris to say that I had Chauncey water in my veins. <laughs> <laughs> Sailing, canoeing, swimming, horsing around, the usual. <laughs> Thanks. What about you, Phil? Would you, you typical um, weekend or after school day for you? You know, when you were younger, <clears throat> we got to play, or I got to play. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> my fondest memory is we would play war. Mm -hmm. um, and I would walk up from Milk Street up to Fairview Road, and Paul Hogan, Nick Perrin, Craig Tyler, there was a whole big bunch of us. <laughs> We'd all go into George Hero's cow fields okay. between Fairview Road and the Acibet, and we would play up there. And I have great memories of that. Um, after I got older, my father was insistent that I work. So in middle school, I worked for Catherine Maynard up on Maynard Street um, and with her landscaper. I still remember his name, Mr. Bedurtha. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she told me. And I worked for them, you know, mostly just manual labor, carrying brushes, taking care of the little koi pond that was in the woods. And then in high school, I worked briefly for Chase Paper Company, uh, Arthur Chase, mm -hmm. and got to know Arthur pretty well and his brother Lou and his dad Israel. And then I got an opportunity to work for JJ Appliance. And I worked afternoons and weekends, Saturdays. Ruling was only, Sunday was really the only day off. <coughs> I think all, my generation, I, mean, I think all the boys were expected to work when you got home from school. And I, I wasn't, I didn't do a lot with sports. So there was no excuse for me not to, to go to work. Thanks. How about you, David? What was a typical after school or weekend like for you? Yeah, I don't Other think, than football. I, it sounds I, like football. I don't right? think we hung out. Okay. Uh, no. Because I was out of town anyways. Yeah. So I'd go home like Bonnie did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think Bonnie's story reminds me of something, the 50 cent story. I think we were not poor. We, yeah, but we, we didn't were, have any money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there was something to bear in mind. But don't forget, I was a depression child. Well, you're, you're and earlier 50 than I am. Cents, I'm, I'm, I'm 50 on the cents is probably worth a lot today. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, it was, uh, we had, I worked on the farm. That was basically mm -hmm. what I did me in my too, spare time me too. when I wasn't playing. So, <laughs> and that was all the time. What about you, Dexter? Uh, when, when I 
was old enough to work and I was uh, quite young. I worked at the drugstore, whether it was stocking bottles in the, in the back or uh, washing uh, dishes in the, in the sink out back or making cho chocolate syrup because we made our own chocolate syrup to make sure mm -hmm. it didn't boil over uh, and up until I went to college. And then when I was in college, I didn't work in the drugstore. I worked down at Bay State for a couple of summers. I was a lifeguard at Framingham Country Club for a couple of summers, and then one of the summers, a dean of pharmacy school called me and said uh, he had an opportunity for me down in New Jersey at the Letterly Labs. So I went down there for the summer. Uh, so that was my pretty much summer. I, I did work <coughs> at the drugstore or uh, other places. Okay, great. Uh, well, I know a Bunny touched on this because you read my history. In terms of like, you know, we all know that fashions changed radically. I still have my late 60s, early 70s hairstyle. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the only thing that's different is I didn't used to have the beard. Um, but anyway, so so what did what did you and the teachers just give us a sense of back when you were in school? Maybe because it, either you know either elementary school or maybe even high school because that's when people start sort of acting like what they're their view of their generation. What did, what did teachers and students actually dress like? And I guess uh, we'll start with, you want to start next or we'll go reverse order? I had a crew cut when I was in school. Mm -hmm. you know, if it wasn't, yeah. I didn't have long hair, it was cut. And when you put the wax in the front and stand it up. And then, yeah. but, but it was no nonsense. I mean, you didn't fool around, you didn't have long hair, you didn't uh, dress sloppily, uh, because if you did, they'd either throw you out or put you in a corner in a, what they call the dunce chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and there was no argument about it. You did it, and if you didn't do it, by the time you got home, you'd get your butt <laughs> taken care of, so. What about it, uniforms, ties, uh, there, no, no, toys no, or anything? No, or no, you just, no. just had to be neat and just, yep, neat and yes, proper? Right. Okay. What about you, David? Any, any different? Yeah, I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure my mother would have set me off with clean clothes and, and in good order. That's, that, that's all I can remember right. about. I mean, that, that, that was the way we were raised. Well, that's what we're here to find don't, out about. Just you, don't leave home, you don't leave home without it. You right. dress properly and yeah. present, uh, yeah. that you present yourself and mm -hmm. represent your family. Yeah. Okay. So, I, oh, go ahead. I can okay. remember wearing high shoes. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. You hated them. You hated them. High <laughs> shoes. And then, uh, so that's one memory I don't like about okay. them. I said, well, but other than that, I can't remember. I suppose I had clean clothes and, and was properly dressed and okay. not too short, not too much skin showing. What about you, Phil? Nothing special. The, the one thing that I do remember, we were the, these, on the first year of us moving up into the high school, they had relaxed the dress code. And there was no such thing as long hair or any of that stuff, but they were doing away with the dress code from the high school. So, do you remember what the dress code was and what it changed? Well, you had to have short hair, you had to be clean, you know, had to be mm -hmm. clean. And, and Cecil Brooks, Reverend Brooks from town here, his son, uh, Craig Tyler, and myself. We were fortunate enough to actually grow mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> and we arrived, remember we arrived up at the high school and the principal, I think at that time, was probably Bob Vale. He said, come with me, you three. <laughs> what? What? You said, no, 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 no. They didn't expect us to have mustaches when we came yeah. into school. <laughs> and we were told, well, it might not be in the dress code now, but it will be next week. No mustaches. <laughs> so that's what I remember. I remember, and again, everybody was uniform. All the haircuts looked the same. Everybody dressed the same. Um, it was... Uh, I don't know, everybody was respectful and had nice clothes, and and uh, it was great. Okay. What about you, Marge? Anything, anything else to add? Not really. Not really. I remember wearing skirts and blouses mm -hmm. yes. and, mm -hmm. and loafers. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh no. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. There now, was that wasn't even a thought. <laughs> and now because it was advertised, it's a question I have to ask, which is it, and it, going back to like high school or whatever. What did people do going on dates? Where, where did people go in town? Favorite places that you know, restaurants or what, what was what was like dating like back for you back in high school or whatever? Anybody brave enough to venture that question? I, I don't think there was much outside activity apart from the school. Uh -huh. We'd go to school dances, right? And I think that was the principal out of out of town activity or in town activity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think when we had a junior prom, we went maybe down to Framingham somewhere. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, uh, 
I, we never went to a restaurant, I'm pretty sure. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> was going to the counter at Boyce's or whatever, was, was, was going out or heading I can remember having a soda in Boyce's. I don't think it was a date. I think I was okay, just much younger than just that. Just hanging out. Okay. <laughs> I, I, my memory fails me at this point. Okay, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. It does a lot of points. Okay. What about you guys? Any, any response to Well, there were, there were school dances. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can remember going to a 4 H parties mm -hmm. that would be at somebody's house. Mm -hmm. um, were there church dances or anything like that? Because uh, I know in the 60s or, or the 70s there were like some coffee any. house there, things. There was. Uh, I don't remember. Anybody remember going to uh, Mrs. Allen's dance lessons oh, at yeah. the Armstrong oh, School? Yeah, yeah. Dance, dance lessons. Dance lessons. <laughs> and, and I don't know if that was uh, fifth, sixth, seventh grade, maybe. I don't think it was high school. I think it was uh, pre high school. And then I can remember we'd walk from there, a group of us, to the drugstore for a Sunday right. or soda or whatever <laughs> after it was over before the drugstore closed. Yeah. Uh, and we call that a date. That is a kind of a group date. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because there was no place like a, the old Vienna Coffee House. There, oh, no, no, it, no, that no, didn't show up until the 80s. No. Just so for well, all the people there, 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 there were like were, movie theaters in town except other, the town hall that would occasionally show up. There were other ice cream places. You could get an ice cream at the lower level of the Mary M okay. off of oh, Central yeah. Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. You could get one at uh, Nick Hudson's below the newsroom on West Main Street, which is where the real estate office is now, I think. Or because there was down, a stairway that went down the stairs. There was a restaurant yeah. down there. You could get ice cream, coffee, whatever down there. Um, where else could you get ice cream? Do you remember when the Dairy Queen opened? I don't recall when. I think uh, it was here when I was here. Okay. So that, that's been there quite, that's been, been there a long time, I bet. Yeah, yeah I, I don't, don't think it's just, new. it's not there a lot longer than people think. Is yeah. it, is Irma's not there anymore, is she? No. Okay. Yeah. Well, she, yeah, they buried her. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> a small, small cone coming out of the <laughs> 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 yeah. Bonnie, any different memories about, I mean, no. about the, okay. First, thing, you were talking about dates. Yeah. You don't have to. I, I don't remember going to the movies once in a while. And where did you go? For this night. Yeah. For where did you go? Was it when the movies were in town hall? Or? Yeah, no, no, no on Summer Street. Yeah, the Street. Street. It was a oh, grand oh, the theater, theater there. Okay. Summer Street, okay. and I think the movies were thirty cents. Oh, maybe two bits a quarter. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the matinee you could get in for a dime. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah that's what I can remember about that. See, Bunny had to behave when she was little. I had strong Paris. Let me tell you, there was a strong police relative that looked <laughs> yeah. after. <laughs> picture of Bunny in her little majorette uniform yeah. with this big imposing trooper, right? I can tell you something funny about that. That was, you know, you don't remember a dentist in town, I can't think of his name now, but he was head of the, the drum corps of the Legion, I guess, and we had a junior Legion. And I was head of the, <laughs> he quit his job. And they cut his uniform down to fit me. <laughs> <laughs> she looked very good in it, too. Yeah. It had a hat this big on it, and it was so hot. Oh. I can remember going to some kind of a competition in Taunton, Mass, in the middle of August, and I fainted in the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> to get it. it was too hot. It was surge or something. It was a bad oh, uniform. No. They cut it. So that's a, that's a memory I have. I woke up in a tent. All right, well, we're about halfway through, so I'm going to switch the topic. We're going to talk a little bit more about the cultural and social aspects. We sort of segued into it with talking about dating or whatever. But in terms of, it, I, I know a lot of you already answered this, so I don't think there's anything to, uh, to add. In terms of like part time after school or summer jobs, I know a couple of you work on your family farm or whatever. Mm -hmm. Were there any other sort of, and it doesn't have to be yourself, maybe your friends, what were the, what were the typical either part time or summer jobs that the kids in Westboro did back in your day? Anything come to mind? Tidy Town was a, uh, certainly an employer. Uh, okay. uh, Bob Jewett, who was a, a captain of the football team when I was there, worked Tidy Town for years, mm -hmm. uh, several years. Uh, mm -hmm. He had a big muscular guy. Mm -hmm. He needed those muscles for Tidy Town. Mm -hmm. That certainly was one of the p better paying jobs. Yeah. I think. About how, you any idea about how much you'd get paid? I have no idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything, anybody else that? I, mean, I know Dexter, you said you worked at 
There are those. <laughs> it was peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and anything else, anybody? I worked on the farm. Right. Yeah. Okay. So family labor. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Of course. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I meant by family labor. Right? You got to live there, and they fed you as well. I remember my father said, "If you're bored, go out and weed." <laughs> <laughs> well, I can remember interviewing for a chambermaid's job um, at the hotel that, we, that is now the 920 that, in that area. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but at the last minute, I lucked out with a family connection to Mass Electric, so mm -hmm. my summers were spent working at Mass Electric. Yeah. Clerical work or yeah. doing yeah. Yeah. yeah, typical summer job? Okay. Yes. Do you remember um, about how much you made? God, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> We're talking like 67 through 71. Yeah. Um, but I worked for a woman, she was the training director there. Her name was Alice Gannon, and she was cousin to Sarah Gibbons, who was the, the principal at the Armstrong School when I was there. Um, so that's what I did. I didn't have to do the chambermaid. <laughs> <laughs> now, Phil, you said you worked at JJ Electronics and a few other places. Yeah. And, and yeah, what I remember is that all my friends worked. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I th again, I think that was the culture back then. Is that um, you didn't come home and hang around and just watch TV. Well, first of all, you didn't get to watch TV. There was no TV. Mm -hmm. There was no internet. Right. There was no computers. There was none of that. So you either read or you worked. And um, we all worked. I can remember that really Sunday was a day we'd all get together and, and have fun. Mm -hmm. uh, or if we, if there was no school during the summer, we might have some time. But everybody worked. All my friends worked different jobs, different places. And, and a lot, almost every business in town hired kids. Mm -hmm. And yet, do you have any sense of, about how much like you or your friends got paid like at JJ or anything like that? I mean, just to compare to today's minimum wage or whatever? You know, I don't. You don't? Okay. I mean, you know, when you're, when you're, you know, 14, 15 years old, anything you get as old is a lot of money. You know? yeah. uh, I, what, I, what I do remember was I always had enough to go down to Nick's mm -hmm. and get a hot dog, go down the stairs, say, wave to Bill Ford, go downstairs, have a hot dog or some french fries and just sit at the booth. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I think that was one reason we worked so we could do some of that stuff. Yeah. I, think, I think I know what the answer to this for two of you is going to be, but what, uh, what sort of Stores and businesses were favorites, at, like in downtown, just to give people a sense. Now we've got lots of everything in town, and there's cars, and everybody drives everywhere. But in terms of like when you went to go to a downtown business, or just what were you, what do you think the go-to places were for for like when you were growing up for kids your age, and, and what what were they like? I think I know what Dexter's and Bunny's answers. Are. <laughs> so we'll start with you, Phil. Any, any um, I think again, what was di what's different now compared to back then. You knew all the store owners. They were all usually Westboro residents. Mm -hmm. They knew you. <laughs> Bunny certainly knew me. <laughs> um, but you know, you you start at you know you start at Swans, then you go down JJ Appliance, and then you go down to uh, Lord's Men Shop. You go down to Herman's. You go to um, Bill Ford's Newsroom. You go down and see Star Rob and the Tailor across the street. Noah Trank. My mother used to bring me to Noah to get shoes. shoes. And we'd go to the Circle Store, and then... Or you'd go to Noah's to pay your taxes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 He was the town treasurer. Yeah, he was the town And the, he, he, the town hall didn't have, didn't collect your taxes. You went to Noah Trank's shoe store to pay your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I spent more than one afternoon uh, at, at uh, Westboro Drug Company, or as all of us townies call it Bloises. Mm -hmm. right. um, and what I remember, I remember two things about Bloises, which is interesting. I remember most drugstores, or most places you got a, you got a Coke, you got it in a glass. Oh no, not at Westboro Drug. They used to have the little metal things that they put a paper cone in. <laughs> and, and I remember that. I said, well, this is different. And the other thing I remember is if you were hungry, they had a little camel soup dispenser. Yeah. And you buy a camel soup, and they take them, they pour this little thing, and the jam into this thing that looked like came like Frankenstein's, you know, laboratory. <laughs> and a couple minutes later, they pour you a nice hot cup of soup. And then Lowe's variety, um, you know, 
next door. The, the whole old family. It, and again, everybody knew everybody down there. And they knew you when you went in. Mm -hmm. That's what's different. Mm -hmm. so. it, you, you, if anything ever happened, and uh, most of us, I would say, it was home before you got there. <laughs> All you knew about it before you got there. So you better damn well own up to it, or else it would not be pretty. There was no anonymous secret. Yeah. No, 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 The anonymity no. of society. No. <laughs> Anything you can add, Mark? Well, um, I would say I among all those. I remember the five and dime with the day sisters, the mm -hmm. twins. Yes. All, all the lowest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That day was the favorite. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the newsroom, Bill and Rachel Fords. Mm -hmm. um, we particularly enjoyed it for the comic books. It was whole <laughs> wall of comic books. Mm -hmm. um, and Blois's um, by the time I was in junior high and I would stay after school for, maybe it was Girl Scouts or maybe it was something else, uh, you could get a root beer Coke. They would mix. <laughs> and I thought a root beer Coke was the most amazing thing. <laughs> um, and uh, of course Lowe's and the Circle. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> and if I recall, the Fords looked right next door to you, Dexter. Uh, 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 first grade teacher, Mrs. Ford. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Ford passed away. I, I I don't remember him, but they lived there. She oh, she fed the pigeons. Oh my God. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 pigeons. My mother was a birder, and uh, she <laughs> she didn't want any of those pigeons from off town. <laughs> <laughs> this is right right behind the library. This next yeah. house. And she had him in the house. Never mind in the backyard. Yeah, she had him in the house taking she care of. Leave the windows open. So the pigeons could go in, right? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You know, nobody's mentioned A and P or First National. Yeah. We have two grocery stores yeah, right downtown. Right. The, the uh, A and P is over where the uh, Kung Fu place is on Summer Street, mm -hmm. and the First National was on the corner where it burned. <laughs> well, karate, whatever it is. Yeah. 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 Okay. And the, 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 uh, the First National is on the who, corner who's, where it burned. Who was the butcher over at the uh, A and B? Uh, it was a low. George Kane. No, Albert. George Kane. George Kane. Oh, well, there was a low over there yeah. too. I think one of the it was it uh, Bill maybe. But see, it depends. And I don't know about today, but you know, if your mother went to. A and P. That's the only place you went to. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you went to the stop to, uh, to the uh, first national, national, that's where you went. You only right. went there. It was, you know, it's just like stops yeah, and stops and, sort of and roads for us now. Yeah. Yeah. Loyalty. Right. Well, buddy, you have, you, you, since you sort of came your two and a half miles to dance school, but then never quite turned out. What do you remember about the, the shops, or what, you know, how much, how often would you go downtown? And Not what, very what often. We had everything we wanted, really. We raised cattle, uh, not cattle, but yeah. we had cows, and mm -hmm. well, they are cattle, I think. Yeah. <laughs> cows, and we had everything we wanted. And there were, we were a big family, so we had a working farm that fed us. Pretty so, much self. Yeah, self. self, self yeah, we were, so I don't remember going to the store, but I, one time when I was in high school, they took a movie. Of Westbrook. Does anybody yeah. have any idea yeah. where that movie is today? Mm -hmm. My mother's got a copy. Yeah. Your mom's just got a copy? Yeah. Hey. Mm -hmm. That's that's where the movie, that's that's the movie star came to Westbrook. A movie star. A movie star. Betty Baker. I went to yeah, school with her. Yeah, she was my best friend. She was the star. Yes. She was Miss Westbrook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they picked her up at the Westbrook Airport. Yeah. You know, and she got out of the plane, and they took her all around town, mm -hmm. and she went into all these stores. stores. And wow. one thing, there was a, a, a market on, you know where the Green Shaw was yeah. there? Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, uh, right along there was a market. Hopkins and uh, Boys, what was the name of the market? But where Martin Hadwish store was. Oh, yeah. I don't know. But anyway, I was looking at that movie one time. I think it was, it was taken Tony's Mike market. when I was in high school. And there was a sign on the when you know how they advertised it, what they had to sell. Three pounds of hamburg for 99 cents. <laughs> should have gotten some. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that, I wonder whatever happened to that movie. I think Chris is on the case now. It'll probably be on the end of the year. 
I would think it would be a good thing for the historical society to get their hands on and keep it. It is wonderful. She went around to all the churches. She went to the stores. She was just a. Was she a West Coast person? Yeah, she went to school with me. Oh, Betty Baker. Betty Baker. Okay. Hmm. And. Uh, it's been a great thing to have. For We're going to get it. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the last time I saw it, when we were selling our house, there was a couple that were in the real estate business that came to, you know, we hired them. We didn't actually hire them, but they came for, and, and he had a, a, that movie. I don't even remember his name. It was a couple so, selling real estate. Oh, Matthew? Oh, no. What's the book? Mm -hmm. No, Before I don't that. remember their name. It seems like it was Foley. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he had a copy because he showed it to me. Mm -hmm. That was the last time I saw it. But I mm -hmm. think it'd be something worth looking and saving. It was interesting. You're right. We'll mm -hmm. check it out. Mm -hmm. anyway. Now, David, I, I, what you get from <coughs> Danny Mac? No, those names really are familiar. And I hadn't remembered them until I heard Phil mention some of them. And I think I went into some of those places perhaps a few times. I remember getting my hair cut, though, Mel Janian, uh -huh. yeah. it was the, with the barber shop in town. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, for many years, was the, two brothers. Right? Mm -hmm. oh, no, Carnegie and Mesrop. That's right. right. You yeah. went in there, was something. you yeah. wanted yeah. to get Carnegie to cut your hair. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Mesrov moves down the road. I saw, I saw Mesrov uh, probably about two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Was Alan C. and Bob Brown. But their father was a barber yeah. also. Yes. Yeah. When the barber shop was on this side of West Main Street. Yeah. Right. It started out between what was the bank and blanket chips. Do you remember the official oh, name of the barbershop? Sanitary Barbershop. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> there was other barbers too. And I, I, I mentioned that to my wife. She was a hairdresser this, this afternoon or this morning. Cassidary. To Leo Cassinari's barber shop, yeah. yep. mm -hmm. which is now the ladies' hairdressing shop, uh, Buck bar, See, Buck's barber Air shop, Haven. Buck Air Haven. Haven. Oh, I don't know what it's called now. Al the barber. Al the barber upstairs. Mm -hmm. upstairs. <laughs> yeah, Al the barber. Right, speaking nice. of Blankenships, I remember going into Blankenships one time for a blouse or something, yeah. and I didn't want to try it on there. She said, well, take it home and try it on. Would they do that in that day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> take it home to try it on. You have to pay for it, maybe. No, well, I you didn't. didn't, but you would today. Oh, you, you would today. Oh, I, yeah. I'll bring it back. Right. Yeah. She gave me, she said, go ahead, take it home, try it, it doesn't fit, bring it back. All right, well, in addition, we've talked about fashion, we've talked about school, another sort of big cultural thing that happened. I mean, I remember, I won't go into my story, so I'll be old enough to be on this panel soon enough. Uh, but I remember the transition from black and white to color TV, but some of you must remember either the transition from radio to TV or not had one, but it meant music is there. So any, com any sort of comments about what music you listen to or remembering anything about radio or TV or anything of the era? We were radio in the barn, and it was all country and western. Yeah, okay. country and western. Do you remember which station? It was no, western. No, I, I remember that. Then we started to hear uh, the little cloud that cried, Johnny Ray, the little cloud that cried. Does that ring a bell? Anyway? Yeah. He's one of the early, early mm -hmm. pop singers that uh, came mm -hmm. along. And we occasionally would hear that on our country and western uh, channel. Mm -hmm. uh, but not channel, but station. Yeah, okay. And that's, that's all about all I can okay. remember. I can remember before we had a TV, yeah. we'd go down to Dan Borden's store and watch the TV in the window, because he had a window ah. in the display. <laughs> and we could watch the TV there at his store. And remember where Dan Borden's store was? It was on South Street. I worked no, there. No, no, down on, on East Main Street. I mean East Main Street, yeah. Almost right. opposite Union Street. Yeah. He had an appliance store. Mm -hmm. And one of the first TVs that I saw. And I yeah, I worked in my, there for a while. My grandparents had the TV before we got one. So it would be good to go visit Grandpa right. and Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see TV. Funny, uh, you said you worked at, at, uh, at Dan Boyd's for yeah, a while. Do you, do you remember? Work or something, I don't do you remember anything memorable about either radio or the transition no. to television? Or, or we sold a lot of TVs when we finally got popular. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I can't remember. I don't even remember when I got a TV. <laughs> <laughs> and radio, like that, I used to like quote country and western uh -huh. music too. It was a program that was on all the time every week that I used to listen to, but I can't remember. Okay. The country okay. music work. Marge, anything in the sort of the that aspect strikes um, 
Radio, not so much early on. Um, there was a station out of Worcester that my father would listen to every morning. It was a WTAG mm -hmm. station. Um, it was the Telegram and Gazette. Mm -hmm. So I guess he was getting the news. I, I seem to remember we always had a TV. Um, and of course, the usual kid stuff. Uh, Big Brother Bob Emery at noon time, and then Mickey Mouse Club later in the afternoon. Oh, Boston movie time, four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Always showing a movie. Um, but uh, I guess for music, we, we used the record player. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do remember probably into junior high, I started to hear uh, the Everly Brothers. Mm -hmm. Um, all you want to do is dream. That one, mm -hmm. that as as a little kid, that that really struck me. What not the not the people from England there? Oh no, no that, that, was that was a little later. That was a little later. Mm -hmm. But anyways, that was probably the first pop song that really caught my attention. <coughs> What about you, Phil? You had nothing but a hound dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up with a AM radio, mm -hmm. and I remember having that, and it had a little headphone jack on it, so I had mm -hmm. little bake light metal ones that looked like you were a fighter pilot from World War I. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, listened to it. And uh, one of the big things back then was WBZ. Mm -hmm. uh, they had some <clears throat> some pretty innovative programming at night. Um, so that's what I remember. But I do remember the first color TV that I ever saw was at uh, Parker Tyler's house up in Fairview Road. He got it in on, it was either Friday or Saturday night. All of the, all the gang that I used to hang around with, <laughs> we were all got invited up to Tyler's house and we would watch Batman. <laughs> Interesting, but that's the first, the first TV show I I saw. It was was just, Batman as well. It was, I remember, it, yeah, it was just amazing to see it in color. Yeah. It really, especially was. all the powers and lands. Yes. <laughs> uh, that, so we're we're getting close to wrapping up. I'm going to say one. I've got one question, then I'm going to let you each wrap up with tell, telling your story. But I mean, we talked about it a little bit with WBZ and the radio and the news and things like that. But and so. Can you tell us a little bit about how you and your family, you know, got your news? I know there was the Chronotype locally, then there was radio, and, and there was the Telegram and Gazette. But anything specifically, or remember about how you got your local or state news? I guess uh, I'll start with you, Bunny. Do you remember how, how your family got any of the news? No, I don't no. remember that at all. Oh, okay. No, I don't seem to remember. Okay. Don't think yeah, that. You that. You, well, you said Telegram and Gazette. Yeah. Remembering that the Telegram came out in the morning and the Gazette right. came and there were two papers, right. yeah. So there was two papers a day, yeah. and that covered the news. I mean, the Telegram today, if you want to get local news, it takes at least two days for it to appear in the paper. You can see it on TV before. But back then, it was... You, the next morning, you knew what went on at the meetings. The was it Joe before. Darling who ran the local Joe office? Darling, he was... Uh, Right next to where the across the street where the Seven Eleven is. <laughs> right. Yep. That's where the Telegram office was. Uh, I don't know where it was before then. I mean, that's a fairly new building. Yeah. Yeah. What about the Chron I mean, What about you, David? The Chronotype was Chronotype. published on Milk Street. Right. Upstairs. The, I remember Aronson being the publisher. My was Aronson before Mark was Barb Smith, right? Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah. It was Aronson yeah. for a long time. Yes. Hey, a little bit of trivia. Yeah. The giant printing press that printed the Westboro Chronotype. Mm -hmm. It was so big when Bill Martin bought that building to oh, for the pub. To the pub right. yeah. They buried the printing press in the basement. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. When you sat at the bar, yeah. you were you were sitting over yeah. the they dug a hole put it in and then put pour concrete for yeah. the floor. Forty foot long printing press. Yeah. 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 That was the original chronotype printing yeah. press? That's where the chronotype was printed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. By Aronson was the first owner that I remember. Okay. And it wasn't just the newspapers. Now it's weekly. Uh, they, they besides the newspaper, they printed postcards, they yeah. printed if you had a business in town and you had a business card or a letterhead or an invoice or an envelope, it was always printed at the yeah. time. Okay. What about you, Mark? Any, anything you remember about how you or your family got the news? Chronotype? We, we were Gazette. Uh -huh. We weren't Telegram. Mm -hmm. we were late, late risers. Late, so many well, choices. Yeah, well, you know, you go to work first thing, you go to school first thing, so you come yeah. home and you get it in the afternoon. Um, <clears throat> Uh, WBC eventually 
Um, and then I'm thinking back to the, the days of, uh, on Channel 4, uh, Jack Chase mm -hmm. and Don Kent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, <laughs> and this is top of mind because I was talking with somebody at the Y today about some of the coverage of Ian down in Florida and Jim Cantori mm -hmm. on the Weather Channel getting, and of course he's a burly guy, but he's out there in the wind and the rain, <laughs> and a tree comes along and takes him out from underneath, and he's hanging on to yeah. a street sign. And I, it made me, re, it reminded me of Shelby Scott, mm -hmm. and she would be the person that Channel 4 sent out in the West. Yeah. Occasionally, Don Kent would go out the back door, <laughs> and we'd see him shoveling snow. <laughs> <laughs> Things got a little more sophisticated. They <laughs> sent a reporter out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, I, I got time for one more question, and it's sort of going to make it, it, you can take it any way you want. Uh, we've all lived through the good times, the bad times, national uh, triumphs, national tragedies. I'm interested in sort of how you felt that either you and your family or how Westboro responded to one of the, in any, pick, pick one of any big news story of, of the generation, whether it's World War II, Kennedy assassination, you know, or, um, or anything. So if there's one particular big news event that you remember growing up, if you can reflect on how you think you and your family in Westboro dealt with it, and we'll come back to her here. So Phil, anything come to mind for that? Um, you know, part of the problem with being a historian and constantly researching histories and going there, you almost feel sometimes that you lived through <laughs> what you're reading and writing about. Mm -hmm. um, so it becomes, you know, for me, um, I don't remember the the hurricane. I don't remember the tornado that hit Westboro. Mm -hmm. I have hundreds of pictures of houses destroyed and, and I've read wonderful articles about how this town all came together after the tornado and how the Lyman School came down and helped admit all this. But I can't remember anything in particular um, as, as far as the town, but mm -hmm. I think this town just, whatever happened, it always had a history of everybody just pitching in and getting done what needs to get done. Any, any specific memories of a big event, Mark? Yeah. Not really, no. no. I mean, I can remember, I would have been maybe four or five driving around town after the, the tornado. You drove at four or five? I'm just dying. Being driven. After the, hur uh, the, um, the tornado. And, um, I remember going out during one of the hurricanes, the eye was over us. And so my mother took us all out when we were picking up sticks and and then we had to go back in. But no, I don't I don't remember a whole lot about that. What about you, buddy? Any well, particular big event? I remember the nineteen thirty eight hurricane. Uh -huh. And I remember that well. Because uh -huh. I didn't think we were gonna live through yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, the tornado too. Mm -hmm. but didn't do any harm to, to shingles off the roof mm -hmm. and our house, but it did a lot of damage and was mm -hmm. book, you know, mm -hmm. probably remember that. Too. Oh yeah, you, yeah. That, that would be my, uh, yeah. which yeah. my point is the tornado in 53. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just raised hell through, as it went through town. A small swath, but it did yeah, a whole yeah. lot of damage, in, a lot of damage. The interesting part, in Shrewsbury got hit at too, and my brother <coughs> lived on Lake Street, Shrewsbury, Every house on Lake Street went down except his. Oh. The way it went, you know, it went right. Well, that's it. He it had was a damage. narrow path, and it just yeah. went, yeah. went from where to start up in Princeton, yeah. and came down through and ended up in Fayetteville. Wow. That's where it ended. Okay, what about you, David? Yeah, I remember the tornado, too, and um, in the sense that I didn't see it, but my father and my brother were up in the doors of the barn, and they saw it pass right down the railroad tracks and out to the north of where we are, coming into town. And I was in the parlor reading uh, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court. I, I can remember that sort of detail. So, but I, so I missed the, seeing the funnel, which they saw. But uh, uh, someone came by after that and said that the Ward Farm had been hit. And so we got on our tractor, and we went down to the Ward Farm. And Mr. Ward uh, had been in the barn, which is, uh, had been hit badly, and he had broken his hip. So I can remember getting him into a car so he could go off to the hospital. 
and after that, I think that uh, there was a lot of community activity in yeah. terms of trying to patch up uh, places that had been badly damaged. So I think that was probably the principal thing that we could, we could remember. We all seem to have that in mind, but uh, I have a pretty vivid memory of it. Well, as always, Westboro seems to be a town that pulls together when it's most needed. Um, so I guess we'll hand it over to Kathy or Chris, okay. want to wrap it up, and I'll just throw in my two weeks from tonight, town, special town meeting at the high school. Hope you can all be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very I, I, precise. Why do you think I brought the class? It's a good time. <laughs> invite you to for some uh, refreshments before you leave. Um, I just want to mention we have a few more activities coming up. Two in October. The uh, Historical Society and the Library are jointly sponsoring the Wicked Westboro Spooky Tour of Crime, Murder, and Mayhem, uh, which is going to be on Thursday, October 20th at 6 p.m. and you can sign up for it through the event uh, listed in the library's uh, website. Uh, and that's going to be a tour of four locations in town. It's going. It's a pub crawl that doesn't have a pub until the end because we end at the Central House. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll see three historic sites or four and end up at the Central House. Uh, then on uh, Tuesday, October 25th, we're going to be a part of the Main Street Trick or Treat at the Sibley House. Um, uh, from 4 to 7 p.m. where the kids can come by. I think it's October 27th. No, it's the 25th, Tuesday oh. the 25th with a rain date of the 27th. Okay. Okay. Uh, 4 to 7 and the, the Sibley House will be on the uh, map for trick-or-treating uh, with our costumed board members or volunteers. <laughs> um, our next actual program is a Zoom program. It's going to be November 7th, 7 p.m. on Zoom. Um, it, in, because of Indigenous Peoples Month, uh, we are going to have a program called The Truth Behind the Tales, the Nipmuc Presence in Westboro, Mass. Uh, the program is going to be given by Cheryl Tony Holly, the leader of the Hassanamisco Nipmuc Band in Grafton. And she's going to talk about Nipmuc tribal oral history, especially Westboro's Nipmuc stories. And she's going to uncover the historic basis and Nipmuc perspectives on each story. And that'll be on Zoom, and we'll be publicizing that in the next couple of weeks. And you can sign up to register on Zoom for that program. And as I mentioned, also, the Sibley House will be an open house on Sunday, November 27th, during the holiday stroll Thanksgiving weekend. So we hope to see you at any of these events. Thank you so much for coming tonight. And thank you again. Yeah, special to thanks to our panelists. Yeah.